Hey everybody, yes, that's right. We are moving again, and this is just to follow up on that series of videos I did, whether I stay in California or move to Texas, and we have decided to make the move to Texas, and this is gonna be one of my uglier videos, and there's so many things off the wall and no longer here in this place as we prep for the move. You can actually hear some echo, at least I can, in here right now. But the thing I wanted to go over is that I will be saving at least half just in expenses by moving to Texas. And a lot of people may say, yeah, but you're giving up the great weather in California, and that is very true. We will absolutely miss the weather, although this year's kind of sucked for weather. It looks nice today. Um, but we will absolutely miss that. It's going to be a scorcher there, and that's going to be the one thing that we do miss. There's a lot of good things about there that we liked, and who knows, we may not end up staying there forever and if history shows my pattern throughout my entire life when i was a kid to now as an adult i constantly move and it sucks but that's just the way i am and the way things have have panned out so we're doing it again and we have decided to rent at least for this first year uh, it could turn into a rent to buy thing because the owners of this place were actually looking to sell as well but because existing homes are difficult to sell right now because the builders in that area are giving such good deals compared to what existing homeowners can give in this rate environment that it may turn into some sort of scenario like that if we really like the place um, and if we really like the New Braunfels, Texas area, which is right in between Austin and San Antonio. So we'll see if I end up buying there. I was planning on buying and that was going to be one of my must-haves because I am sick of moving and ultimately we chose not to buy and the reason is is because basically I am in this situation where I'm trying to completely reinvent myself for the third time in this industry. This industry has been rough as far as that stable job and I knew that going into the film industry that it, it has its ups and downs. Going into the visual effects and animation industry, I think I've seen every single one of the three major shifts in this business and the first one was right when I graduated college the directors and writers went on strike and that was three days after i graduated film school and that's kind of what pushed me into visual effects because they still had work and film didn't because you couldn't get on set jobs right then and so that's how i fell into visual effects at the time as a pa and shortly after i would say maybe two years after there was that's kind of where it kind of caught up to the visual effects industry and so the work dried up but i was only out of a job for like a week. That was probably the longest I had been out of work for the next 11 years. And that's when the Life of Pi thing went down and, and that was after a string of bankruptcies in the industry. So at that point, I ended up packing my things. We were in Canada at the time. I packed up all our stuff. We were living downtown and we needed to move to North Vancouver anyway, but we decided to move into a basement suite just to really hunker down and save money. And now I'm in this position now where the entire film industry and gaming industry has been completely, this is the worst I've actually seen it out of all three times. And I actually didn't go looking for another job when my last place of employment had its culling, let's call it. That was sort of like a hybrid gaming movie company. And I didn't look because I wanted to, I could see that there's something new out there and I have been wanting to get my own business going, especially with Money Act, this business. But this has always been my side hustle and my retirement business. And what it has been is the, the stuff that I teach in Money Act, if you happen to be one of the members of Money Act, is what basically allowed me to do what I'm currently doing. And if I had bought in Texas, it would have shrunk the window of time for me to get to where I want to be. 20% down on a you know half a million or more place. So I decided that I could use that runway to make sure I get to that other side. And I'll go into detail later on what exactly I'm doing as a main hustle versus this current, I guess you could call it a side hustle. I've created it in such a way where I can, I can teach people a lot of stuff where they can learn it on their own, but then they can work with me and others in the group to kind of get 
the understanding of concepts down and to ask questions. And they can ask me directly in these Ask Me Anything meetings, and uh, they can also ask the group in the Discord channels that we have. It is a side hustle in that sense because I can do other things, a lot of other things, for my main job, if you want to call it a job. And I'll get into that later, but that's kind of why I've chosen to rent at this time until I've got really firm feet on the ground with this other thing that I'm doing. And, you know, it was a tough choice. We we're so tired of moving <laughs> that we wanted to go, okay, this is where we're going to be. So anyway, want to just update on that. And again, we're saving more than half. So we're going into this place. Currently, we pay 5500 a month in rent in this place in California. 2700 square foot place. We're moving to a 3300 square foot place for 2900 a month. And it also... Just this month, I paid our electric bill was over $400. It's been cold for California here. We haven't been running heat because it's not that cold. We haven't been running air conditioning. So what are we paying for? Yeah, we have a, a fountain in the backyard that has to run constantly so it doesn't mold up. But really? $400? So we're going to move into this place that has solar panels on the roof. Maybe it's our car that's costing the money to plug it in. This place has a supercharger already there and you know now that's going to be charged by the sun which is pretty awesome so that bill goes drastically down you know maybe not to zero but like from what i can tell it'll be somewhere around 50 bucks a month for electricity so our utility costs are going to go massively down and you know then from there it's let's check out how much groceries are going to be probably around the same price maybe cheaper who knows but you know we're easily going to save more than half. Then there's a tax thing. No income tax, no state income tax in Texas. So that's going to save, you know, over 13% right there. Their taxes on businesses is much better. So we're going to save in all the crazy structuring I had to do living here and in Canada. So there's so many savings that it's just a no-brainer. And that's one of the easy things you can do is use a producer technique, which is finding money in the current budget you have. And while this new main hustle has income coming in, it's not quite the potential it could be. And I can see the big potential later down the road. But now shedding this massive cost is a great producer technique right now, which moving again, yes, sucks, but it's a it's going to save me thousands and thousands of dollars. And on top of that, now I'm not chipping away at that crazy, crazy amount that it's been for a year now since my last real job. And I can stop that bleeding and actually start doing the program that I teach which is generating this perpetual money that has helped me get me through this whole time. So it's been a blessing having that knowledge and having that thing that I built up with that system, uh, which I call the Moneyball system, and now going somewhere where I can start doing that again and building that back up even though I'm making way less money currently right now. I'll keep, I'll keep everybody posted on all of this and, and the journey because I think a lot of people are interested in this type of thing and what it can mean. Still, even though as we're leaving, I have a lot of people going, oh, but Texas, you know, the crazy politics. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> the politics here are insane. They've destroyed cities here. Or there's potential tornadoes or hail. And then, of course, here you've got earthquakes, wind storms that have wrecked our backyard several times, fires that happen here all, all the time. So, you know, wherever you live, there's disasters. And to me, none of any of that matters. The difference is the money you save, which is the big thing, and the weather. And so am I going to pay 50 grand plus a year for the weather or, you know, suck it up and have three months out of the year that kind of suck with the weather that you can go jump in the lake or jump in the actually we will be by a lake and a river um, and we'll have a pool as well to jump into so it won't be all that bad even though it's scorching hot outside for three months out of the year anyway i've rambled on long enough i hope you enjoyed this video even though it's a bit plain 
today. Actually, I wanna leave with one financial thing because I haven't done that in a while. I want to direct your attention to Saudi Arabia just last week, pulled out of the petrodollar system that has been in place for over 50 years. Since 1971, Nixon went off the gold standard. Actually, it's 50 years because 1974 is when they put the petrodollar in place to save the collapsing dollar the dollar had collapsed. At that point, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, everybody wanted their money back, and it kind of put a run on the dollar. Dollar lost 50% of its value very quickly, and then the petrodollar stopped the bleeding. And that basically the petrodollar says that the U.S. supplies military support to Saudi Arabia in exchange for them only selling oil in U.S. dollars. And they have just said last week that they are not renewing that contract. And they have been definitely going to a lot of BRICS, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, etc. A lot of new countries are joining that union and they're trying to create a new dollar system, probably based on gold, which it sounds like. Going back to the old gold standard in some way, who knows how they're going to do it. Probably if you have China involved, it's probably going to be some sketch CBDC, which is ugly, ugly for everybody. And the U.S. needs to wake up and get get serious about our financial freedom. And so anyway, that was the one thing I wanted to leave everybody with because that is a major wake-up call if you don't have gold yet. In fact, click the link below. I have a link where you can purchase gold, have it safely in a vault, not pay storage fees. In fact, get yield on that gold through monetary metals and click my link below, which helps out the channel as well. But the yield you get, I think the last one I saw was like 6%. That's great. While you have your gold in storage and that 6%, you're gaining more gold because you're, you're paid in gold, which is pretty cool. So check out that link. Now is the time because there's just a recent dip. It's, you know, I don't want to be a Bitcoiner. It's going to the moon. This is the real Bitcoin. So if you don't have your gold, now's the time if you don't have that now. All right. Take care, everybody. See ya probably on the other side when I'm actually in Texas. Take care.